<sighs> Yo, what is going on guys? So as you guys know, I've been talking about launching this video podcast. I've had a podcast now on iTunes, Spotify, SoundCloud for almost a year. And a lot of you guys have been supporting it. The podcast has been doing really well. We just hit 300 ratings on iTunes, which is good for a podcast on iTunes. On SoundCloud alone, it's getting thousands and thousands of views every single episode. And everyone's been hitting me up and commenting and loves it. So I just finally launched the video podcast. Today's video is a clip that I did from the very first ever video podcast that I filmed back here. I did it with Taz Taylor, who's the CEO of Internet Money, and he's doing crazy things. I wanted to give you guys a couple clips of some parts from the podcast I think you guys will enjoy. Make sure you guys go follow Kyle B's podcast. The link is down below and the link to this podcast, the full podcast will be uploaded there on the YouTube channel if you want to watch the whole thing. I just wanted to put this out just kind of as the launch of the podcast. Um, just because I don't want to post it all on this channel and kind of get it all jumbled together. I hope you like it. I hope you enjoy it. Please go subscribe to the Kyle Beats podcast. And yeah, let's get into it. Here's a clip from the podcast. First video podcast ever right now. What's like your main like focus right now? Like, what do you think your main like? Because um, I feel like you've been killing it. What's like your main like your source of like income and like how do you how does that stuff like all work? So, I kind of talked about this last time I was on here. Pretty much just like, I'm doing, um, I'm trying to be an executive. I'm trying to be the best executive. Yeah. I don't really care about like making beats anymore. Uh, because that's that's so low, like lower level. There's so many people just like, man, I just want this placement. I just want that placement. I just want it. Once I work with this artist, I'll get the respect I deserve. Or the notoriety or whatever. And what people don't realize is like, you could produce literally one of the biggest songs in the in the world. And you still won't get that respect you deserve. You know what I yeah. mean? And you won't, you <laughs> won't, you won't have that respect until you either write the song, like full hundred percent, produce the song, write the song, everything, or you sign the artist, and then you like, it's your artist. You know what I mean? Yeah, you have to be a boss, in other words, to fucking yeah, 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 and like run the shit yourself. It's just like you know, you get a little, you get a little bit of taste of something. You're like, damn, like your whole life you just wanted this one thing. You get a little bit of taste of it, and you're like. This ain't even what I wanted. Like, this isn't yeah. even like, you know what I mean? It's just hard to even like explain. But <laughs> for me, pretty much, I'm just income and everything. We're about to do a, a major ass deal with weight supply. Um, and it's going to be competing directly with Splice in terms of like with the kit sales and everything like that. Yeah. We're already generating over like seven figures a year. Yeah. Off of like waste supply and like kits and all that shit. Um, so just running that up, that's pretty big. Me developing artists and you know doing everything like that. There's a lot of money in that. It's really big because I'm executive producing everything. And then you know producing as opposed to executive producing, there's just it's more beneficial and more monetary like gain in that than just like working on a beat and sending it like you're helping write songs you're helping yeah. structure projects you're helping like yeah, yeah every sonically aspect of like this artist you're in charge of so how did you think you figured out that you wanted to like do that and go that route was it just from getting those placements and like seeing what goes on and being like i want to do that i mean i knew that from the jump because i was like talking to these yeah. big ass producers everybody idolized like, this is the thing that people get fucked up, like, clout and, like, image and, like, all this shit that goes on on the internet, like, Instagram and Twitter, and you see these producers who everybody knows their tags and shit, but whenever you see, whenever they see me, it's a respect thing. They already know, like, I'm doing way more than they're doing, and that's not me being cocky. It's just, like, a thing. Like, I don't have to hold my nuts on people. So, it's just, like, they already know I'm already doing way more than what they're doing. It's a respect thing, and, like, I make more than them. You know what I mean? So all yeah. the time they're like, damn, Taz, like you're you're navigating this, you're doing label deals, you're doing all this. Like I'm just trying to get the biggest record out produced. How do I how do I move over into that world? It's like Metro Boomin talking to like Dr. Dre. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just different levels of shit. Yeah, like how did you how did you learn how to maneuver through all that stuff? It's just, when just me, fucking <laughs> With me, it's just I never I never got satisfied, bro. Like I've had big I've had big records. I got like over like 40 fucking plaques right now i got 25 in the mail yeah, yeah. still coming so it's like <laughs> once you get all these plaques once you get all these records once you got his like these billboard songs once you like take these meetings with these labels and see the other aspect like 
A and R's and how to what it takes to break an artist. The high isn't chasing a big record anymore. The high is chasing the artist that you signed that is like touring, merchandising, fucking putting out records. Just overall, their brand. That's where the real money is in the music industry. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That's like the high I'm chasing right now. I don't really give a fuck if we're part of the number one record. I'm trying yeah. to. It's more like longevity than that. I'd much rather have an artist who signed to me who has millions and hundreds of millions of streams not just be a part and own three percent royalty one rate record. yeah on like but i feel like you see a lot of labels that just sign that find a new artist they sign them blow them up fucking huge and then like the next year they're they're gone or something like that or like well see all that later, all that comes for foundation like the uh, labels sign artists and these artists don't have teams they don't have people who's directing all their music making sure everything's getting done it needs to be done like taking all the pr- the pressure and stress and of like building and developing an artist. Yeah. That, that's like the shit that I got to take on every day. So like Ian Dior, for instance, like I'm the one in charge of Ian Dior putting out music. I'm the one in charge of like what songs that he's doing. Uh, yeah. Him having like a, a follow up song or hits or making sure this shit's streaming well. All that shit is my responsibility. If whenever once an artist has to put that on their shoulders, their plate, put. Um, like how they present themselves to the public through like Instagram and like styling, like all that shit, how they dress, how they look, how they yeah, talk, yeah, yeah. their image, everything. You kind of get lost in shit. But if you have people who have specific roles and jobs to like do things, so it just makes their job easier. That's how you build a career artist. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> I feel it. So what, like. Because he's signed, right? Ian Dior signed to... Ian Dior signed to 10K Projects, which is through, like, Elliot Grange, who's, yeah. like, the same the same uh, label as Trippy Red and 6 9 and Lil Nar and Kiera yeah, Love, yeah. the, the, the do-rag chick who, like, dances on Instagram and... <laughs> yeah, all this shit. So, so you're just... You're executive producing all of his stuff? Yeah. Is that... Is that what is, what's the difference between that and, like, managing someone? Managing someone is like you got to take much more. Like you got to handle touring, you got to handle merch, you got to handle. Uh, being a manager, bro, is to basically be a damn babysitter. You got to make sure yeah, your yeah. artist is like staying out of trouble. You got to make sure your artist is like not getting fucked up, not not being seen too much. You got to worry about paperwork. You got to worry about all this shit, as opposed to me just stay staying on like a hundred percent the creative side and worrying about like songs and shit like that. Yeah. Which I, I'd think much rather it? prefer that as opposed to babysitting a fucking artist. Which, I mean, I, yeah. I, don't get me wrong. I fucking babysit every artist I'm associated with. But Yeah. Yeah. So do you, so do you like, work... Do you get percentage of the record from that? Or, like, how does that work when it comes to, like... I get a bigger royalty percentage and all that than a normal producer, yeah. That's dope. Yeah, I was confused whether it was, like fees or percentage or whatever. but like you got so much shit coming in you're not even worried about that that shit is like you know what's crazy is like we sell beats for like 30 40 grand a piece yeah on the low side 10 15 yeah how do you work out so all right so how would you work out some some shit like that like um if it if really it really are, depends would you still send them like a whole like if the song beats? if they put the song out and it pops off uh, without them clearing it, we're gonna tax the fuck out of them because they should have cleared it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Other than if it's just like some shit they hit us beforehand and they get it at a normal price as everybody else. Prices different. You know, it's different per artist and everything like that. Like the type of artist, the size of the artist, their fan base, how big they are, everything they got going on. I produced one true. of the biggest artists in the world and made twenty five hundred dollars off of it. So it's like. <laughs> classic that's not shit you know what i mean compared to like <laughs> when fucking lucid dreams and all girls are the same we taxed them 50 50 grand for all girls are the same because they put it out with cole bennett before uh yeah before they even cleared it with us and that's kind of what like helped cause like the juice world rift was like the fact that like we did tax them yeah yeah do you, do you think there's like a benefit for producers without lawyers or management or any team to be sending out beats or be sending out loops or anything like that? I mean, bro, it, it doesn't matter. Like, 
The only thing that sucks is whenever you do that, if you don't have no manager, if you don't have no lawyer, if you don't have no situation, you don't understand how the industry works, you will get fucked. Everybody I know yeah. in this industry, at some point, producers, artists, songwriters, whoever, like, it's just like a thing. Like, you know, you know how it feels to be fucked before. We've all been fucked on certain things. Some yeah. some L's are bigger than others, but we've all taken L's at some point. You know what I mean? Like, Nick. Nick's first L was the fucking, the lucid dream shit. Like, but that right there was, like, so big and so massive to the point where, like, he really had to hold that and, like, learn from that and look at it from a learning lesson as opposed to just, like, damn, this is an L. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, 100%. I mean, that's what makes the W's is the L's. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what makes the wins. You can't you can't win without any losses. Crazy it's crazy, world. dude. Just think, thinking back to the vlogs that I watched of you and to see where you're at now is pretty... Um, just like to hear, just to hear how you're talking and just so fluently, just like you just know everything about it. It seems like you just know everything about the whole fucking industry now. And you know, it's like crazy, three, bro. Like three, four years ago, you were just, just get doing PayPal and fucking yeah. Um, Which I, I mean, if I didn't do that, if I didn't do the the the, what I'm doing now is pretty much what I did on a bigger scale. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I was developing brands, like I developed like the Brick Flair brand and all that shit, and like. Yeah. I sold it to Nick or I helped develop like Nick. Like I built Nick up. I built internet money up. You know what I mean? So it's just like the way I built Taz Taylor up is like the same thing I'm doing with these artists now. It's like yeah, if I didn't yeah, do yeah. that on a smaller scale, like sound click and YouTube and type beats and internet money. And yeah. hundred percent. It's I, all I, stepping stone. Yeah. I definitely wouldn't be able to do what I'm doing here right now. The thing that kills 100%. me is there's people who don't understand how to build brands and they just see me doing it and they're like, Oh, I could do it. Cause Taz is doing it. But they don't understand like, the lessons and the shit I had to go through to learn to get here right and now. And you just had the and you just had the foundation not only like with all those skills and the brand and everything like that, but you were also able to make as a producer, able to just make a good amount of money in your own money in your own way. Yeah, so like I remember being on anything. the internet, like remember bro, like I, I used to sit back and think like, Wow, I made a hundred thousand dollars in a year. This is crazy. Like you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, wow, this is this is the type beat producer. This is this is, you know, superstar oh, this is whoever. He makes a hundred thousand dollars a year. This is oh my god, what? Yeah. That's like like what, eighty eighty two hundred dollars a month or something like that. Bro, I made fucking <laughs> like four hundred and like fifty thousand dollars like last week. <laughs> like <laughs> literally in one day and I did nothing to do it. It was like the craziest shit. Like it's just like I don't know. Bro. See like where where does that come from? that like how did you do that how did you make that money in a, in a week i'm doing song deals i'm producing on the other side of like it all comes down to just executive producing bro like once you yeah. can once you can build artists and develop and make songs and everything labels will throw any dollar amount at you any dollar amount because it's, if crazy. they don't if they don't if they don't throw it at you they got to pay taxes on it you know what i mean so it's like, why not yeah. spend this money and at least like take a shot as opposed to just like saving this money, waiting on a perfect thing that may never come. And if you, the year runs out and you don't spend any of that money, you got to pay taxes on it. Yeah. Yeah. You think it's more beneficial for someone coming up to like try to build with a, like a artist that doesn't Bro, have a that name? that is the best way. And I know no one wants to hear that because they always want to look at like, okay, so, takes the longest. Yeah, so, so how much am I getting paid? What is going on with this? Can I want to be working with this artist? I want to be on this album. I want this plaque. You know what I mean? But all the plaques we got, a lot of the ones, bro, are just from like midis or samples or loops. We wasn't really uh, affiliated with those, like building that. Yeah. The true. shit we're a part of building, we're just now getting plaques. Like Ransom's about to go gold. Like Juice World, all those plaques, that's from real hard work of Nick and DT and the team just like helping him find his sound and developing this shit and doing all that shit together. You know what I mean? So yeah. for being like an actual producer, there's levels to that shit. If you want to do that, don't run your don't run the well dry. You got to keep putting water in that motherfucker. And the water isn't by working with people who's established already. You're, they're going to come because they always want to. You got to understand there's two there's aspects. There's artists who's on already and they, they want to find that new hot sound or new hot song because they constantly need hits. And then there's artists who are always thinking forward and new because they don't have the looks of fucking the biggest artist in the game so they got to find ways to be creative to get seen and yeah is those artists get bigger the bigger artists who are already established who needs hits is going to keep plucking from them so they're going to keep taking producers they're going to keep taking all this shit. like you don't see take keep work a black boy no more you know what i mean yeah yeah, yeah. like he went off and started working with travis he started working on that take he's my boy like i fuck with him like i respect everything he's doing 
But I'm just saying, like, you got to understand that producers and the longevity of this is much more. So the more you keep developing new artists and just keep showing it, like, here's an artist yeah, that I built. Yeah, you see that with artists that pop off and then they they pop off and have all these certain producers on it and then the next album, it's just, like, the the classic producers that are hot right now yeah. fucking on the next album or whatever. Yep. Yeah, it's crazy. You guys got your hand in both sides right there developing then brand new artists and then fucking with the minis and the loops just getting these fucking hot records with like the popping artists already yeah like i could like bro we didn't know that we were on <laughs> yeah we we know we know we know that <laughs> we know that we were on uzi's project because we were rolling loud in december me and nick and uzi performed it he performed the fucking uh the song and we didn't know what it was but we stayed quiet about it because and we're smart and we're like Okay, well, he's did you find out by hearing him perform the song? Yeah, we, we performing it at <laughs> Rolling Loud. That's the only reason why we knew. Uh, That's crazy. What's the what's the producer's name? Fucking working on dying. Use Nick's loop. So then, yeah. like using that, me and Nick, Nick was like, "Should we say something?" I'm like, "No, let's not say anything, because let's let them put this song out, and then we'll come like we produce this loop. This is our loop, as opposed to us tell them <laughs> now and then be like, all and right, cool, fuck you, no, nah, or they'll go change it. You know what I mean?" So it's like, we knew it, we just waited. So like we were just like, okay, this is cool. This is in the back pocket. This is fun. So just a little shit, like, we don't know when it's coming. You know what I'm saying? What's your opinion on the fucking come up of a producer right now? Like, like what are you... Like who? No, like, of a producer. Like, there's so many people that follow me that are getting into beats and starting to make beats and just want to make... And the it's like the stepping stones of it all. You know what I mean? Cause like that's just like so I, it's like so like small to me because I see all the I see the bigger picture and shit. You know what I mean? I know. It's, yeah. I don't. I, I'm not talking you about you. I'm talking like about I just ask, like I'm talking about like in general like producer like to just I'm, talk about like producing shit like it's like you know. I feel like if I asked you a question about type beats, you'd be like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> like I feel like now you're so far past that. that I haven't you, sold you a beat even, since August thirty first, two thousand seventeen online yeah and people still ask me to this day like man when are you doing another video for the channel of like <laughs> know, how to right? sell beats online and i'm like bro like i went from making 30 dollars a day or a lease whatever to making hundreds and hundreds of thousand dollars a day off of the industry like i could tell y'all some shit that would show y'all but he, i don't know bro it's like was it hard for you to like let go of the beat sales to try to do something bigger hell no nah. i couldn't now. wait bro because i knew i was good because we got like wave supply and all this shit you know what i mean yeah. like doing kits and all that definitely made it easier to just be like fuck this yeah. shit yeah we're good it wasn't hard for me because i i didn't have a youtube channel i was just selling them on instagram yeah um making i ended up making like before the youtube channel i was making like a thousand bucks a week so but if i stopped dming people it was gone from instagram so it wasn't Sheesh. hard for me but I feel like bro, there's people I've, who still like DM DM me and like email me and they're like, I got two grand right now. I'll buy this exclusive. I just ignore them, bro. Like that shit doesn't even phase me. Yeah, no, I'll say, I mean, yeah, I mean, that's the thing is like your time is better well spent doing something else. Like I have fucking companies that are hitting me up or people hit me up for exclusives or whatever. But that time that you spend working on that could be time spent working on something else that's going to reach a lot more fucking people and do a lot bigger things and for whatever. sure that's what i always think about yeah what the fuck is another like two grand gonna do if you um, yeah like i spent that at beverly center like an hour ago. <laughs> you know what i mean like that shit yeah like i spent like thirty thousand dollars on artists like clothes like doing all this shit like that shit literally what do you does. think would be the most amount of money for you right now to to fucking make a song with someone if someone was like i got this new artist We'll pay you this amount of money to just to just because help I know that we've literally built artists up to where they got millions and millions of dollars off of like their shit had yeah. to be a couple hundred grand easily because yeah. we can build every every faucet and aspect of their like career through internet money yeah. and just being a fill. There's people That's who've crazy. got multi million dollar deals just because they were looked at as like internet money's next artist. Yeah. That's sick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's cool to think I'll about like the, the power the power that we have is like astronomical but all right 
I hope you guys enjoyed that. Make sure you go subscribe to the Kyle Beats Podcast YouTube channel. If you listen to podcasts all, make sure you go subscribe. I just wanted to put this out just kind of as the launch of the podcast, um, just because I don't want to post it all on this channel and kind of get it all jumbled together. I want to keep this channel vlogs, beat making, my life, just the, that style, the style of videos you guys are used to, and keep all the podcast stuff over there. I don't want to like conjoin them and whatever. Anyways. That, well, that's the video for today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you guys for watching. If you liked it, drop a like. Make sure you subscribe if you're brand new here and this is your first time seeing this. And go watch all my other videos. I am, yeah, I don't know. It's lit. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. Till the next one. See you guys later. Peace.